The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 26th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four ship, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time, we are recording today's show between 8 and 9. So if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. You can always send me an email, steve at tfn.com. But I prefer to hear from you by phone. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. Of course, inside the Tiger's demo, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got U.S. equity futures kind of mixed out there. You've got the Dow futures up 35, NASDAQ up 97, that's about 7 tenths percent, and the ES mini is up 3. So they're basically flat, and the Russell's down 9 points. Over in Asia last night, it was a bit of a mixed bag. The uh, Shanghai was basically flat, the Hang Seng was up 139, and the DK was off 203. Over in Europe this morning, DAX is off 107 and the FTSE is down 28. Now, usually the DAX and the NASDAQ composite will follow each other. Directionally speaking, that is. Gold's up at 80 cents right now. Silver's up 22 pennies. Platinum's about 15 bucks. Copper is up by two cents. Natural gas is back nine pennies. Uh, Lights we crude is trading out at 76.75. That's off 32 cents out there. U.S. dollar index about uh, 101.14. That is um, down 45 ticks right now. I do have a delay on that, so it could be about 10 minute delay on that, so it could be off just a, a tad. So let's begin by. Like we, like we typically do, try to understand what are the market conditions as we speak right now. So for those market conditions, let's take a look at uh, where we're at with regard to profile support, profile resistance. So here, this is a 30-minute time frame. And on a 30-minute time frame, we're looking at the ES Mini. And in the ES Mini, the upper left-hand side, it'll show you the market for statistics. Here you can see that there are 227 instruments trading below profile, 98 above. That says that sellers are the ones with the edge inside the S&P 500. Let's go check out the NDX 100. Inside the NDX 100, we've got 22 above, 46 below. So we know for the 30-minute time frames is that uh, sellers are the ones that are in control. So, in fact, let's do this here. Let me get my 30-minute equity future charts out. And we'll go take a look at those since we know both of those are in bearish positions. And let's go try to identify, see if we can identify patterns or maybe where support is at. So let's start off that way. We'll switch panels here uh, momentarily. It'll be four white background charts that pop up on your screen. So here's what we know about the ES Mini. This formed wave number seven and a rose momentum indicator bottom at 4.30 yesterday afternoon. That led to a, a rally that was kind of sideways from about 10 o'clock on uh, last evening. And then what price has done this morning is price has formed a TD9 count bottom right while it's testing the support of yesterday's low of that Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom pattern. And you also have another Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom that completed as we came on the air at 8 o'clock. Now, here's the key for the ES Mini. If price can close above its oscillator and change line, that's at 4099. Let's call it uh, 4100. If price can close above 4100, we should see a move up to where the counter trend rallies would end. 
where they would end is at the bottom or at the center, I should say, of its bullish structured profile that it closed below. We've seen that test already a couple of times today. One was at 530, the other was at six o'clock. So we know that that 4112 area is a real key area of resistance for the ES mini, at least for its 30 minute time frame. So two bottom patterns that are out here. Um, it is suggesting that it wants to rally, but in order to do that, it's got to get above that red oscillator and change line. In the case of the NQ out here, there's certainly an A to B equals CD pattern that was confirmed by that big old bullish engulfing candle that formed yesterday at 4.30. But I think the release of Microsoft or Google or Chipotle or all of them at that stage, and Chipotle not having a significant impact inside the NQ. But what happened was is price moved higher last night until 10 p.m., and that's when we had a TD9 count top pattern form. was the bar following bar number nine that set up that resistance level up at 12 996.50 now with that td9 count top we've got price below its red oscillator and change line below its profiles whereas the es mini shows a bottoming pattern we don't have that same thing inside the nq will the nq take its uh, cues so to speak from the es mini and the Dow equity future contract and the Russell 2000? I don't know. Here's where the real battle is at. The NQ is suggesting to you and I that what it may want to do is head down to the 12800 level out there. But the Dow is saying, why would it want to do that, Stevie? I just gave you a TD9 count bottom, a Roach Mintum indicator bottom. And what's cool about the Dow equity future contract is prices bounced right up into where it would give you a change in trend signal for its 30 minute time frame. That change in trend signal is up at the 30 33.722. That is a TD9 count breakdown level. We talked about how the Dow Equity Future contract on its 30-minute basis has just formed a TD9 count and Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom. And now we can say with certainty, we know we were taking a look at the ES Mini and say, hey, that, that the oscillator and change line is a key level of resistance. And it most certainly is. However, 33,722 is another number you want to have on your pad of paper. We get a close above 33,722. That's a signal that we should see a further rally. That further rally could take you all the way up to 33,978. I'm not saying that's where it's going to go, but I'm saying that is where the target would be if we get a close above 33,722. Now, what you sort of need to see here is synergy, right? You need to see the Dow taking out a resistance level while the ES Mini is doing the same, and then obviously, preferably, the NQ as well. Now, the Russell 2000. Uh, has reconfirmed another Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It's run into resistance. That's the top of its profile. That's at 1750.60. So a close above 1750.60 on a 30 minute basis is going to suggest to run to 1761.80. A close above 1761.80, and there's something more going on here. So that's the four equity future contracts for their 30 minute time frames. And to summarize here, we've got confirmed bottoms in the ES, the Dow and the Russell 2000, but we don't inside the NQ. And I'd really have to, I'd really have to put together a weird A to B equals CD pattern on a 30 minute chart to say that that's what's actually formed inside the NQ. So who's gonna be the one that's telling us and giving us the signal? Well, maybe we might find out by the end of today's show. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. If you're listening in between 8 and 9 in the morning, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. 818 in the morning. Dow Equity Futures up 41. NASDAQ up 110. ES Mini's up 6. And Russell's down 8 points. We're still looking at the charts here for the NQ. Want to stay here. So there's really two important uh, levels or patterns uh, to be watching and observing. First of all, well, actually, there's three, really, that we can look at. So let's look at the very shortest term time frame. And that's the 15-minute chart here for the NQ. I'm going to go ahead and expand this out. So on a 15-minute basis, you can see that nice road momentum indicator bottom pattern from yesterday. It's uh, 415. Uh, but here what I want to pay attention to is the TD9 count that just recently formed. So that took place at 8 o'clock. And this is on, again, a 15-minute time frame chart that we're looking at. So that low is a really important low. And that's at the 12,885 level. There's a 15-minute close below that bar. Odds favor we make it our way all the way back to the uh, lows of yesterday. So that's why you want to pay attention to that uh, TD9 count pattern. Uh, right now what you have is price just consolidating with inside its 15-minute profile. And the key resistance level areas here are 12,927, 12,943, and 12,976. That's where those battlegrounds are at inside the NQ. Now, if price closes below that, you then have TD9 count patterns that form both on the two hour and the five hour chart out there so those lows are really important that low specifically so write this down on a pad of paper that is at 12806 even steven if we got a close below 12806 then odds favor we come back to the daily time frame that where price is headed to is its bullish structured profile support area and that's between 12705 and 12777 so again take this one by one step by progressions out here we're looking out to the downside before we were at the break, we were looking to the upside and what needed to uh, take place out here. So the very fir first place, uh, to, and I think it would be the NQ that will lead us up, lead us down, which is why I'm kind of uh, uncertain about that, those set of 30-minute charts out there. Here, with regard to leading us down, price would first have to take out the TD9 count on the 15-minute chart from this morning. That would then signal we're likely headed lower, at least back to yesterday's lows, where we know we've got TD9 count bottom patterns on the 120 and on the five-hour time frame. So that's what I would be looking at. Now, let's take a quick peek here at the ES Mini. So let's get those charts to fire up. And while those are firing up, well, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. Right? I'm going to try to do this. Let's just take a look at the market breadth out here for the S&P 500. We're going to start with the ES Mini. Now, market breadth as we speak right now for the ES Mini, for the S&P 500 is bearish for all four time frames that we monitor, weekly, daily, 240 and 60. Remember, the 30-minute was also bearish. Let's take a quick peek in on the NASDAQ and see where we're at here. In the case of the NASDAQ, it's a mixed bag. And the mix is coming really from the weekly chart, which is still bullish. And when I say bullish, I mean there's 26 instruments trading
rain above profile, 25 below. So this is very close to a negative crossover as well. And I'd say if we get that negative crossover, combined with what's going on inside the S&P 500, the ES mini, we're headed lower. In the case of the NQ, likely back to those lows of yesterday or to that profile support level. Okay, so we've got that established. Now, we take a look at the uh, ES mini charts. We closed below the bottom of its profile yesterday, unlike what we did inside the NQ. So what's that mean? Well, if we close below 41.18 today, that's an indication of a change in trend and that we should head lower. Now, yesterday's one-day rate of change in the spot volatilities was 11.07%, I believe. But I do know it was above plus 10%. When you get spot VIX index ratings above 10 plus 10 percent, you typically get a bounce or a bottom very next trading session. Well, we've already gotten the bounce, so we've seen that out there. That bounce may extend itself throughout the day. Here, what we can see on the intraday charts, we already covered the 30 minute that has that Rhodes momentum indicator and TD9 count bottom signal. The 60 minute is trying to do the same, but it's got another uh, what uh, 38 minutes left before we can get a call on that one. We don't have a bottom pattern per se inside the 15 minute. The 10 minute chart does have a uh, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, and that suggests a move to 4108. So we've got one call in the ES mini to 4108. I would say on the 30 minute chart, if price does close above that center and change zone, which is trading just above right now. We called it 4,100. It's really at 4,099.82, but you can't get there, so we're calling it 4,100. So a 30-minute close. We've got eight minutes, less than eight minutes before we get to that 830 mark out there. You close above that, then 4,108 becomes the target area. At least that's what visually sticks out to uh, Stevie out here. We can see all kinds of oscillator unchanged resistance levels out there. Um... Really not much else for me to support, uh, for me to report on here. Let's go take a look at the Dow equity future contract. Let's go see what it is doing out here. So we'll pull that up, try to get whatever signals it might have. And um, <clears throat> so this is populating here. Dow equity futures, as we speak right now, they're up 56 points. The high of the day so far for the Dow equity future contract has been 33,738, about 30 points higher than where we're trading right now. Um, in the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, much like the ES Mini, it also closed below the bottom of its profile yesterday. So a second consecutive close below 33,820 will signal a change in trend. Now, as we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart out there, I don't have any kind of a bottom signal. We do on the four-hour. The four-hour, uh, take that back. So the issue with the four-hour chart, in order for bar number nine to complete, and this does not complete until 10 o'clock, so it's possible. But in order for bar number nine to complete, it must close below. This is at 10 o'clock. It must close below 33,678. Otherwise, the pattern here goes away. The two-hour chart does have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Price right now dealing with uh, its profile resistance, which is at 33,738. I'd write that down on my pad of paper. The other intraday charts, each of them have bottoming patterns out here. So the next key resistance level for price to move higher, we said 33,738. That came from the 120-minute chart. It's 33,722. Let me make sure. 33,722. So 33,722 is a key level that I've closed above on the 30 minute chart says price could run all the way to 33,978. But let's use that 33,738 level. Let's use that 120 minute uh, profile resistance area. And if price closes above that, then we're looking at that move to the uh, to the 33,978, or at least that becomes a target. Now, the cool thing here is because there's so many intraday bottoming signals, what you know, what I know, is if we get a close below today's low, and it could be for whatever time frame, well, let's call it the uh, 15 or the 30 minute time frame, but a close below. 33,583, that says that we had to lower out here inside the Dow equity future contract. So that's what we've got when we take a look at uh, those instruments out there. Uh, spot volatility. so let's change over, take a look at the black background charts for a moment. Let's finish, take a look at the uh, market condition. So we've looked at TAS market breadth out there. That's not the only thing that provides us with a feel for what the markets are going to do. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated. Complicated because we take a look at that spot volatility index. What, what price did yesterday as well as this morning is it has tested and rejected that 50-day exponential moving average. 1960 is the current print on that. I would expect that if we're entering a uh, change in trend and bearish phase of the market out here, then what we're looking at is price would need to close 
above that 1960 level out there. Now, that may take place today, and if it does, that combined with the ES and the Dow trading below the bottom of their daily profile, that just simply adds to that change in trend signal. Now, the next level of support for the ES mini is out at the 4081 area. If you take a look at the very right hand, uh, bottom right hand panel chart out there, that's the ES mini. That's using my uh, synthetic version of the uh, contract out there. And the reason I'm using that is because I can get those weekly profiles. We just rolled over really into the June contract. There's not enough data to really generate that. So 4081 would be the next level of support on the way down for the ES Mini. The New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator, it is now below a zero threshold level. So this is in a bearish position, so to speak. But it's slightly bearish because that spot volatilics is still below that 50-day exponential moving average. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, we are recording today's show between 8 and 9. If you're listening live, we'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. Of course, you're listening in as well during that time period. You can't call in. You can only send me an email. Send that to steve at tfn.com. We had a couple of requests out here. One was inside the Tiger's Den, if I could show my nine panel market update chart. So let's take a look at that out here. If one has interest, many others do. So if we take a look at the ES Mini, we've already really covered that. You see the spot volatility index dead center up in the uh, top there, that 50-day expense moving average being a key level at 1960. You can see the NQ uh, really trading in between a profile uh, support and resistance there, as well as trend line support and resistance. You can see the U.S. dollar index. It's consolidating with inside its daily profile. It found support this morning at the bottom, which at the 100.95 level. 
Um, if we take a look at Goldilocks, also a consolidation and silver with inside their profile. Silver has switched over to the July contract out there. You may recall the uh, May contract price was trading above profile. In the July contract, it's trading within profile. Yesterday, price tested and rejected its profile support level in the 2466 to 2487 area. Light Street crude closed below the bottom of its daily profile yesterday. It's trading below it today. My assumption is that it wants to go at least close that gap at 7580. It may want to do more than that. But I think that that is at least where it's targeted. And that's the high from the trading session where we had a nice gap to the upside. That's the high from the trading session of March the 31st. Natural gas, which has a nice momentum indicator bottom, boy, it just cannot get any love. And right now it's testing its profile support at $2.35 out there. So just no love in the natural gas marketplace. But at some point in time, it's going to be one heck of a love story out there. Or at least that's what I suspect. And if we take a look at the 30-year Treasury, that formed a nice... Uh, I believe that was a uh, TD9 counter roads momentum indicator bottom pattern out here. And uh, price has now made the 0.618 retracement level of that last leg out there. And that's at the 132.13 level. You're trading above profile. So if we do get above 132.13, 133.09 to maybe 134.14 would be on the card. So that's the covering of the uh, nine panel market update chart. We got some other requests out there as well from Dan inside the Tiger Center. Folks, I would love to hear from you as well. Uh, makes the uh, show run nice and easy. And gives you the information you're looking for. And that information is ARWR that Dan is looking for. So let's change over to those white background screens. And we take a look at ARWR. Uh, that is uh, trading, well, closed out, I should say, ARWR, closed out yesterday at 33.58. And that was a nice gap to the upside. That's confirming an A to B equals CD. That's a gigantic volume day that it had. Yes, you don't see it here, but volume there was about 3.6 million shares as it took out a swing point that had 1 million shares. And it closed above its TD9 count breakdown resistance area. So what I'll do on my other screen out here is I'm going to go ahead and draw in the A to B equals CD pattern out there, Dan, so I can give you a different price objective. So the one to one gets you up to 38.42. But folks, what I want you to notice is this C to D. I'll just draw that in. The C to D retracement here, okay, that's taking a look at of this whole A to B leg. The C to D retracement was only a 25% retracement, less than a 0.382. Now, I'm going to go ahead and usually I, I, I require, I require, the, the pattern basically requires about a 0.382 retracement. We're going to go with this one here. And what this should do, Dan, is this should do more than the one-to-one. -one. This should get us up into the, so the one-to-one -one is 3842, one-to-one 0.272 target, 4080, and 618 is 4383. So knowing that, knowing that we've got a nice roads momentum and TD9 count bottom on the weekly basis, what we also know is the next battle for you, the next battle for it is 3771. And 3771 is the TD9 count breakdown level for the weekly time frame. So, Dano, a close above that, and I'm not talking about this Friday, not that you wouldn't like it to be this Friday, but a close above 3771 is going to be another bullish message for ARWR. And that would then suggest that its next target area over time would take us up to 4848 or 4950 out there. On the um, monthly chart the monthly chart says 3841 is a resistance point that number is going to move higher as price moves higher so we're dealing with price targets around 3842 3841 3771 nice confirmed a to b equals cd to the upside so all looks good dano in ticker symbol arw that's arrowhead pharmaceuticals dan is our pharma king inside the uh, tiger's den he, he's he's wired to it which is a beautiful thing let's take a look at the next request out here and that's for DocuSign, D-O-C-U. And DocuSign, yesterday, Dan, uh, formed or completed a TD9 count bottom. So let me see where DocuSign is trading in the uh, pre-market out here. Uh, closed at 49.15. It's trading at 49.89. So, Dan, what we would suggest is when you do form a bottoming pattern, a TD9 count is one of those. That was a bar following bar number nine. What price should do, it should bounce up towards its oscillator and change line. It should actually tag that oscillator and change line. And that's at the 52.20 level. That line's going to change up and down just a tad. will change up as price moves higher so you get a nice weekly a daily td9 count bottom um whether price can take out that oscillator change line i don't know 
The weekly chart shows our prices testing breakout support at 49.70. Well, we know we're trading above that as we speak right now. So that's a key level of support that may, in fact, hold also. And we know on the monthly time frame, price pulled all the way back to its breakout level of support. Who would have believed that from all the way up at that 320-ish level, all the way back to that 45.92. But that was the breakout level. That's why we utilize those TD9 count patterns out here. So to summarize, DocuSign, you should get a bounce today. You should get a bounce that takes us up to its daily oscillator and change line out there and uh, then from there if it can get above that then we'd be looking at perhaps move up to 5574 so that's what's going on with DocuSign and thank you very much for the uh, request uh, Dano inside the Tigers that wants to take a look at Meta so we can definitely take a look at that we'll look at all instruments out here um, although I do have to close today's show I won't be able to do the very last segment it's like about a three or four minute segment out there. I will not be able to uh, do that. I have a doctor appointment I need to get to. So here we've got uh, Meta and we take a look at Meta. It closed below the bottom of its profile yesterday. As we speak right now, Meta is trading out at close at 207, trading at 211, uh, 211.44. So it's trying to regain uh, its profile level. So Dano, the first thing is, is if you're thinking of going short, and so this where it's trading right now would be or could be the area, right? It's the bottom of that profile, 211.34 or 211.45. But here's the opposite side of that, Dano. If price closes above 211.34, it says yesterday's move lower was a false breakdown. You know, Stevie requires at least two days. One hit wonders. I love those songs, but they don't typically produce the results that you're looking for out there. And that would really be the case here inside of Meadows. So watch that 211, 21134 area. If we look at the weekly time frame out here, you have a uh, new profile that is formed. Those profile levels out here, Dano, resistance 22211. Center of the box is 20 and 190.28 is the uh, bottom out there. We don't have a topping. Eh, we don't really have a topping signal or pattern out here inside of uh, inside of uh, Facebook. That doesn't mean that it can't pull back and it won't pull back. Watch again a second close below 211.34 down. Well, then that says 197.90 would be the uh, target level. The monthly chart is very bullish out there. Price is above profile and it's trading above its oscillator and change line. So, on a 30 minute time frame. So I think what you need to do, you're looking at going short. I I I I let this open up. Take a look at and I also kind of put this together with how the NQ and the ES are trading. So hopefully, uh, Dano, what you did was you caught the opening of the show where we spent really that first and maybe second segment looking at the NQ, looking at the intraday charts and providing you with levels to watch the upside and to the downside. In the case of Meta, it's going to generate on its 30 minute time frame. I'm assuming it's going to generate because it's trading at 211 right now. It's going to generate a bullish reversal candle that's going to confirm a roads momentum indicator bottom. And it's going to be trading above its 30-minute profile. So this may have more to go. That more to go could take you up to this gap. Okay, so that could be that uh, 211. Oh, we're already trading inside there, so it'd have to be the bottom of the gap. It's at 212.45. See roads with TFNN. I'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. 
Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, question that Dan had inside the Tigers then is, what doctor are you going to see? Is it the eye doctor? And the reason he asked that was because he didn't really want to take a look at DocuSign. He wanted to look at ticker symbol DOCN, which is uh, Digital Ocean. So we'll do that momentarily. I just wanted to get back here to Dano, who's taking a look at potentially shorting uh, Meta. Facebook out here. And I just want to make sure you put that together, Dano, with regard to what's going on inside the equity future contracts here. The 30-minute charts we looked at for Meta showed that that's likely going to form a road momentum indicator bottom, which is the same pattern that we have out here inside the ES Mini right now, the Russell 2000, as well as the Dow Equity Future contract. And right now you've got uh, inside, in, in the case of the NQ, it's trading above the top of uh, its profile for its 30-minute uh, time frame. Now, of course, it's only 8.43, but a close above 12.941 at the uh, 9 o'clock hour is going to suggest that we could see a further rally with 13.015 being the uh, level uh, for you to uh, uh, for you to take a look at. So let's go to our first caller. It is uh, uh, Mr. Z inside the Tigers. Ed, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Steve, I'm very good. Thanks for doing this show early. And sure. uh, Steve, I wanted to follow up on something you discussed in the past 15 minutes with a question, please. Steve, yes. you uh, showed a what I think you refer to as a synthetic e-mini ah. S&P contract weekly chart. Yes. And that chart is just a chart that you stitch, You, I think using your words, you calling it stitching together previous previously expired e-mini S&P contracts with the current to come up with, with your objective of coming up with both daily yes. and weekly TAS profiles. Yes. Steve, um, since, oh goodness gracious, since uh, the end of March, since yes, the last week of March, we had a nice squeeze rally, new buying short covering into March 31st. And subsequently, the mini S&P, the S&P Cash Index, the SPY ETF, they've all just gone sideways. And yesterday's break yes. came down and held some, uh, I guess it would be the middle bar of your TAS market profile work. Correct. My, my question to you is, Given that prices come down to that level, the weekly profile, mm -hmm. 
if that level is broken and price holds below, so if we get the mm-hmm. combination of break and hold mm-hmm. below, mm-hmm. what does that likely signify as you see it? 3879. So we're taking a look at the upper left-hand panel, folks. So uh, each of these here are the are the uh, synthetic version of the uh, future contracts. And that allows me, as John said, to stitch together all the prior ones and provide better profile levels than if I use the continuous contract here. So in the case of the ES Mini, John's question was very specific. And that is if price closed below 4081, which is the center of its bearish structure, that's the real key here, John, and why I immediately gave you the figure of 3879. My experience is that when price closes below the center of a bearish structured profile, that's the signal that sellers really have the upper hand and they should be able to push price back to support. We have that same kind of pattern, John, inside of the NQ. So if you look to the chart to your upper right now, that's showing in Tiger TV or inside the Tiger stand, you'll also see that that is a bearish structured profile. So if on Friday the ES closed below 4081, that says 3879 is a target. If the NQ closes below 12886, that says 11960 becomes the target. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, um, it's got a bullish structured weekly profile. Uh, you can see that it's held trend line resistance. And so I would say that if the ES closes below its center line and the NQ does simultaneously, so that would signal to me that the Dow would then pull back towards the 32,903 or a bit lower to try to get to that uh, rising trend line. And in the case of the Russell 2000, geez, who knows out here? Um, you know, I just watched the, uh, it's got a little bit of a trend line, but that's what that, does can that I, answer uh, can your I question? Can I stop you right there, please? A- absolutely. Um, thanks for doing that, by the way. But I, what I wanted to uh, do was interrupt you uh, rudely no, and no. ask you to elaborate uh, on something you've just said. I'm wondering, and of course, if I understand it correctly, Steve, the generation or the excuse me, the calculation of the TAS market profile data is dependent upon seeing both price and volume of a uh, traded uh, security. And given that, we can't get a uh, TAS market profile on a cash index that doesn't have volume associated with it. But take the S&P cash index, the S&P 500. We've got the SPY ETF. Sure. Which does have volume, obviously. My question is, is the weekly TAS profile that you can generate on the SPY ETF, does that, I'm not interested in the very specific uh, data points, but I'm wondering, does the weekly TAS profile give a similar message as the message given by your synthetic E-mini S&P futures contract? The So great question. And uh, I put up those spy charts up on the screen so folks, you can see the daily, the weekly, and the uh, monthly charts out here. And the only thing that the weekly chart offers us is it tells us that right now price is consolidating with inside its profile. So it gives us profile support and resistance levels. Unlike the ES Mini Weekly, which we looked at, John, that was a bearish structured profile. This is more of a slightly bullish structured profile. But with regard to the number on a weekly chart inside the SPY on a further move lower, that target would be 398.07. And below that, it would be the 385.93 area out there. And on a monthly chart, we can see that we have profile support at 385.73. So I'd say the 385 number would be a strong support area on a further pullback. And I think you can get that message really by going back to those weekly equity future charts and using the center of those profile levels out there. But that does that provide you with the information you were looking for? You answer my question precisely. I thank you. Uh, have a good rest of your day. Thanks again, Steve. You bet. That yeah, was John in uh, Philly out there. And uh, so um, I don't recall. I don't think we were really looking. Oh, DOCN. I'm going to get to that before I've got to bolt out of here to head to the uh, doctor's office. So DOCN for um, for Dan. I don't think we took a look at that. We didn't. Yeah. So here it is. So No, that's not it. Where did Stevie put it? Good Lord. That's not it. I swore I put it out there. 
Mm, okay. So uh, Stevie swears he did something. Here we go. So we take a look at uh, DOCN. And DOCN yesterday confirmed a uh, A to B equals CD to the downside. Big volume behind that move yesterday when I see big volume was 2.4 million shares. It was taking out the uh, B point that uh, did volume of 1.9 million shares. Dan, the one-to-one -one price projection out here is 2868. So I don't have that written in. And we can see that you have breakout support at 2571. And we can see that on the weekly prices trade at its red oscillator and change line, 3098. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. I would say the price target is between 2571 and 2868. Folks, thanks so much for joining me here this morning. I've got to take off, but I'll be back with you at the normal time tomorrow. And have a wonderful Wednesday, folks, and we'll see you again soon. Take care now. Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien filling in for the last segment for our man Steve Rhodes. Appreciate him doing the show from 8 till 9 this morning. He's checking out a few minutes early to make uh, a prior appointment. We'll wrap up the hour. We'll do the 9 o'clock update. We'll come back for the morning market kickoff at 9 o'clock in the morning. And we have our man Kevin Hinks at 9.15 in the morning. We got our man Teddy Kegstat at 40 past the hour. A couple interviews during the 9 o'clock hour, which should be good. It's going to be an interesting open, man. Microsoft powering higher even as the Activision Blizzard deal looks to get blocked by the UK. 
You have Google giving back almost all the gains, right? Let's jump over to these stocks as we come into the 9 o'clock hour. Google shares up by 40 pennies. But, boy, you want to talk about action, man. Put it on a five-minute. They beat across the board last night, but not exactly to the way that Microsoft beat. That's for sure, man. You spike up to an area of about 109. You did get a high of 110.60 on Google shares. And it was a slow crawl, man. By 6 o'clock last night, you were barely positive by a dollar. Market started trading lower this morning at about one uh, at about 6 in the morning. So I'm up at 6 in the morning. I'm checking out Google, checking out Microsoft. Big numbers from Microsoft, man. We'll get into those during the 9 o'clock hour. 105.64, we had a 102 handle, man. Google, down almost $2 from where they were last night. What if they had missed, right? It's always remarkable expectations but boy you take a look at expectations okay this equity just traded from a price point in march of 90 bucks came into earnings at 105 so yeah all things considered you're trading right now at about 105 barely positive by 40 pennies on google shares microsoft different story you jump over to microsoft shares up almost 25 bucks look at this thing man catching a bid yet again and we got markets higher as well you get the s p up by 11 we're trading at 4104, far off the highs that we had yesterday, of course, with the sell off. But check out Microsoft, man. You're talking about a move from 275 up to 302. We're trading at 297.91 right now from Microsoft shares. You jump over to Chipotle Grill, they are crushing it as well, man. Chipotle up by almost $140 on their numbers. So decent numbers. Google, maybe the canary in the coal mine tough tough reaction in the market for some pretty strong numbers stay tuned folks we'll be coming back for the nine o'clock update we'll come back for the morning market kickoff it's wednesday and markets in positive territory we'll be right back